sort of talking how a game like this gives a lot of the younger guys in the rotation sort of a chance to get more reps, more minutes. As, as a leader on the floor, how important do you think a game like it, this is for them to sort of get those game reps that you really can't replicate otherwise? I think it's extremely important. I think you, you can't teach experience. So, you know, heading into the playoffs, we definitely want to, you know, K-9 to get into a good rhythm, get his feet up under him. Obviously, continue to feed Hero, you know, continue to have him um, play at the level he's playing at. And um, role-playing guys, uh, Solo playing great, um, KO, guys like Silva, you know, we're going to need all these guys. Um, Myers, we're going to need all these guys down the stretch. So, to get everybody an opportunity to get out there on the floor and get some minutes, uh, it only helps us in the, in the long run. Next question, Wes. UD, I was curious to know, obviously, when um, Jimmy stood up for his teammate in the OKC game, you know, with your experience with the team, what goes to your mind when you see Jimmy obviously standing up for a teammate like that on the team? I mean, that's, that's who we are. You know, um, you know uh, that's our culture. Um, and it's good to see, you know, guys, you know, have each other's back and stand up for each other out there. Um, you know, at the end of the day, we can go out there on the court and we have a us against the world mentality and we protect each other. We're brothers. David from La Gazeta. Hey, you did. Jimmy today said that he thinks Miami can win it all this year. Uh, what makes you feel you guys can make it? I mean, right now in the bubble, right now, we got as good a chance as anybody. Um, you know, it's up for grabs. Um, it's not just basketball. You know, it's a lot, a lot of things going on in the bubble. You got to have mental toughness. Um, you got to be healthy. Um, it's a lot of things that come into play right now. And um, when you put all those things together and you mix them up, I think we're just as good as anybody right now in the bubble. Thank you. Wes, did you have another question? Yeah, I got another one. You, yeah. UD, my question to you, obviously, what is the uh, obviously the, the talk like now with the playoffs now? Have you had a chance to talk to the guys yet and saying, hey, now it's playoff basketball? That conversation is coming soon. Um, we got a couple of things set up the next couple of days, and we're going to have those conversations. But, you know, we've already been planting that seed, leaning up to it. Um, guys understand things are getting a little more uh, serious. Um, and it's go time now, but we're definitely going to have more of those conversations in the next couple of days about, you know, what's expected, uh, you know, the expectations, um, the culture, the accountability, you know, everything that we're going into the playoffs. Uh, we are who we are. We're going to be there for the next seven games and on and on. Anthony hey. Chang. Hey, UD, what, what's the advantage of, of being on the court with young guys like today, as opposed to maybe being on the bench and trying to, to help them from the bench? What's the advantage of being on the actual court with them and, and you know, playing with them? Uh, you know, for me, I just want to always be vocal. You know, I'll talk about it when I'm on the bench as far as, you know, being vocal with one another out there on the court, you know, having those face-to-face -face conversations, um, you know, being ahead of the plays, uh, just different things like that. So, you know, when I step out there on the court, everything that I talk about with these guys in practice, everything that I try to point out to these guys, um, it gives me a chance and opportunity to lead and, and do it by example. So, you know, sometimes instead of hearing it, those guys see it and, and it translates a little better. Hey, Kendrick. Um what do you expect from playoff basketball since this is going to be your first playoffs? I expect us to, to come in with a lot of focus, um, a lot of detail, and get the job done. I mean, first round of playoffs, we built, a, we built a great habits all season, and I expect them to come out and show them on the floor. Thanks. Anthony Chang. Hey, Kendrick, just considering you, you got there late, obviously, and, and then you had you have to leave and miss a few games. How hard is it to be able, you know, to be able to find a rhythm? And how do you feel? You know, you have a few practices left, but how do you feel entering the playoffs next week? Yeah, um, obviously it's a little tough for being away uh, from the game for, for so long, and um, then having COVID and a lot of just a lot of um, things held up against me. But I mean, I'm controlling what I control. I'm back on the floor now, and. Um, just trying to get in rhythm, uh, definitely get my conditioning up, and I think I'll be good. I feel pretty good at the, at the time. Uh, there's not, um, you know, they you, you got jarred in the shoulder, uh, neck area, uh, obviously a little bit more than, than a stinger. Um, and then we'll just uh, see the results. Uh, he's getting a scan right now. We'll see. There's no meaningless game. I mean, they're, they, everything means something, obviously. Yeah. But how hard were the last, I don't know, however many minutes it was? After yeah, that. I mean, that, that uh, just, you know, takes the air out uh, of the building. You know, but you, even as competitors, you don't want it on either side. You just want to be able to get through this game and, and uh, be able to uh, have everybody available, you know, for the playoffs. Uh, but let's just, let's just wait before we even... Um, speculate, you know, what, what it is. Uh, David from La Gazeta. 
Coach, this is Davide from Italy. I'm sorry to bring you back to basketball, but um, looking at the playoffs, you're going to face the Pacers uh, starting Monday or Tuesday. Obviously, this is not a game to get any good indication from, but what do you think you guys need to do to beat the Pacers in a seven-game series? It's going to be super competitive. It always is with our two organizations, and we have a few days to get ready. Our guys are looking forward to it. Thank you. Anthony Chang. Spo, so you talked about how this was an important game for Kendrick today. How do you think he looked out there in his minutes? I mean, he played, played 33 minutes today. How important was that for him? Yeah, I mean, that's the most important thing. It's just the minutes. Um, you know, I'm, that, that, I'm not even really evaluating uh, everything else. So they'll, they'll have some good days of work uh, ahead. Ira Winderman. Ira. Sorry, Eric Darsberg said on the broadcast you had spoken before the game about not wanting to play Derek too many minutes, but that you were limited in your bodies, so you might have to play guys a little bit longer. How tough was that for you to sort of have to maybe go a little bit longer with certain players because you only had so many players? I mean, that's that's basketball. Look, things are going to happen. Uh, you, you can't uh, just always be on uh, eggshells. And let's just wait and see. <laughs> we don't even uh, know, you know right now he's getting a, a scan he's already moving better so let's just let's just wait and see before we go on full scale you know panic mode and, and then just what I, I know tim mentioned this also but sort of the rest of the way did you have to talk to your players about sort of perspective the rest of the way or is that or did you just let the game play out go in the locker room and handle it after uh in terms of what in terms of the, the momentary shock of Derek, and then they're still Oh, yeah, I mean, play. that's why we had the timeout. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, just to settle the guys and get them just concentrating on on uh, trying to compete and play good basketball. Uh, again, you can't play to try to not get hurt. And then the other thing, because it was a feel-good moment, Udonis Haslam getting the start. Yeah, you know, I, there will be a day, and hopefully that's, that's not for a while, um, where I, I don't have... You be in my locker room uh, as a player, and I'm I'm really going to miss that. That's why I'm I'm just enjoying uh, all of these moments. He brings so much uh, to our organization, um, and I, you know I don't know if his leadership has ever you know meant more than to this this group on so many different levels. Uh, our veteran players, and then obviously our young players. Uh, he is the epitome of, of leadership at all levels. Um, and he was, uh, if I played him a little bit more in the fourth, if I would have, he would have gotten, you know, 10 plus rebounds. He'll be able to do that 10 years from now. Tim Reynolds. Lawrence suggested it would either be a three or four year deal. He gets the summer. How long do you, do you want? And, you know, whatever, you know, because you can't put a price on it. Look, every, every team in the league right now is looking for veteran leadership. And it's a hard thing to find. It's a hard thing to quantify. And you have somebody that's, that's grown up in our culture, and he wants to see it done the right way. And he's going to make sure that our young players understand how things are done uh, the Miami Heat way. Uh, and then he has that credibility, uh, not only the young players, but the veteran players. You know, he's D.F. Hutton. When he, he speaks, everybody listens. Um, and you, you saw it even tonight. Uh, you know, he's he's growling at guys, barking at oh. guys, you know, just yelling at everybody, uh, diving on the floor, taking a charge. Um, you know, eating up the glass. So those are that's just the example you want uh, in your young players seeing. West, go ahead. Oh, how do you evaluate? Obviously. Um, the depth of the team going into the playoffs after a game like this. We like our depth. That's a major strength of our team.